this month's design is uh, filled with words that um, I think we could all use right now. Love, peace, kindness, joy, all in the middle of a heart. And there's a few different stitches, but it's actually a pretty simple design. Uh, so there's just a couple things I wanted to show you. So um, what I'm stitching this with is a Baldoni 12 weight pearl cotton. And it's uh, the number of it is on the email that I sent you. It's number oh, 501. So the first thing I wanna do is cut a length of thread. I always go longer than I probably should. And we're gonna make a knot by bringing the needle and thread together, wrapping it a couple of times, pinching that with my finger and thumb, and then pulling while I'm still pinching. And it makes a nice little knot. I have quite a tail on there, so I'll cut that off. Okay, so the first stitch I'll show you is the um, stem stitch. I'll, I know you've gone over it before, or we have, so if you've already seen this, you're more than welcome to fast forward. But um, when you start a stem stitch, you always want to start at a, an end in point. You don't want to start in the middle of a line, if that makes sense. So I'm going to start where this leaf meets the stem and pull it up. My first stitch is going to be an eighth of an inch, back a sixteenth of an inch. Because the curve of the leaf is up, I'm going to carry my thread up. So you want to carry your thread the same direction of a curve, if you're going around a curve. Now the next stitch is going to be a sixteenth, or excuse me, an eighth. Come back up in that same hole. I'm still carrying the thread up on the top. Sorry. <laughs> That's why you don't, I shouldn't stitch with this long of a thread. <laughs> okay, and then we just keep repeating that. So it's an eighth of an inch. Come back up in that same hole. And just be consistent with where you carry your thread. And um, one thing I wanted to show you at the end of this is how to turn around and go the other direction. Um, because we want to go down the other side of this leaf. And there's several different ways to turn a corner. But one of the ways that I like to do it if I'm making a leaf, because it almost looks kind of like a real leaf might. And you see how on this one? It comes to a really sharp point. So the way I do that is I'm just gonna take just a couple thread stitches, just a barely any. Come back up in that same hole. And now I'm just gonna turn the corner. And what that does is it just, it gives just a tiny little bit of, an, of a point there on that leaf. So now I'm going to turn the corner and start the same way where I'm gonna come at eighth, back a sixteenth, and always come back in that same hole, and I'm, again, I'm carrying my thread on the side of the curve. So as you can see, I've got these leaves finished a couple of different ways. So the leaf, the leaves up here, they have a type of fly stitch running down the center. Oopsie. Which just adds some detail and texture to it. Um, I really actually kind of had a hard time deciding if I wanted to do that or not on this pattern, because I also liked just the simplicity of having just the outline like these. So that's up to you. You can leave it just like this, or you can fill that in. So uh, I'll go ahead and finish the other leaf, and then I'll show you how to do that middle stitch. But I'll so to do these veins in the middle of the leaves, I'm going to do a type of fly stitch. I'm gonna start with one stitch just going straight down the center, about a quarter of an inch, and then I'm going to come up to the side of that at an angle a little bit below, so it's kind of in between. And then I'm going to take my needle down right across and bring the needle up at the base of that initial stitch, the thread is gonna go under the needle, and that's a fly stitch. So on a regular fly stitch, I would just couch it down and, and put my needle down on the other side of that V. But I'm going to go down another quarter of an inch, come back up on 
this side again, just like I did before. Go down on the other side, up at the base of that uh, straight line. Keep the thread under my needle and pull it in place. Go down about a quarter of an inch. There you go. And then to end it, I'm just going to put make that a uh, quarter of an inch stitch or so. And now we have that, those little veins. Another stitch I want to show you is the blanket stitch that goes around the outside of the heart. So when you're going to begin a blanket stitch, you're going to bring your needle up on the line. Hopefully you can see my drawn line. It's not too dark, but it's right there. So um, I'm just going to continue on because I ran out of thread there. So this is where I'm going to continue. But if I'm just starting, I would do it the same way. I would just start at the point rather than just in the middle of the side. So the first thing you want to do is carry your thread on the outside of the heart or the opposite of where your teeth are going to be. I'm taking about an, well, they're less than a quarter, a little bit bigger than an eighth. I'm trying to keep them uniform, but I'm not doing too bad of a job, but they're, they're not quite uniform. Okay, so you're gonna carry your thread behind the needle and pull your thread away from the teeth. If you pull it towards the teeth, then this is just gonna fall in like, like that and we don't want it to fall in. So you always have to carry your thread away from the teeth and carry, so it's gonna be on the outside of the heart. I'm gonna skip over a little bit, make the tooth, come back up on the line. Thread goes behind the needle. And we just continue that along and try to keep them fairly, uh, I can't talk and stitch at the same time fairly uniform in size and spacing. But as I've said many times before, by having these stitches not be perfect, it just also really shows that it's done by hand. It isn't a machine that stitched it, which I like the look of that. Okay, we're getting close to the end. So to end it, we're just gonna take the needle down right at the base there. And now the blanket stitching is done. And what I did at the top of the heart, when I came to this point, I just made one little tooth go straight down and then these others angle out to the side. So another little thing I wanted to show you is on this K. I made kind of a little loopy there. And we could stem stitch it like we did the letters, but that would be a pretty tiny little thing to stem stitch. So I'm going to start at the bottom of this K and I'll stitch up to that intersection. Okay, a couple more stitches. Okay, I'll just bring the needle down there. Now, to make that little loopy doop, what I'm gonna do is take my needle up. I'm just gonna go ahead and split the stitch that's going up and down, but you could just do it right on the side of it. I'm going to carry the thread the same shape as that little loop, and I'm just going to make a little lazy daisy stitch. So I'll take the needle back down in the same hole, bring the needle up at the top of the loop, carry the thread under the needle, pull it through, and then just couch it down. So I'm just gonna put the needle down right on the other side of the loop to hold it in place. And that's my fake little cursive loopy loop on the K. So I use that a lot little daisy little daisies like that if I'm making small little 
loops. It's much easier than trying to make a tiny little stem stitch. There. That looks pretty good. Okay, so now I, the other thing I wanted to show you too, because sometimes it's hard to do curves and have them look pretty well using a stem stitch. Uh, back stitch works great for that, but I did want I try okay I'll confess I actually did stitch this up in a back stitch the joy and it looked so bad I took it out and then I thought well maybe I'll do a chain stitch so I did the love and a chain stitch I didn't like that so I ripped it up so I'm sticking with the stem stitch here so I'm doing the stem stitch along the bottom of this L and I can take my regular size stitches and um you know if you're doing you know, entering a contest or something, your stitches should always be uniform. I never enter mine in a contest, so I don't really care. And um, so I make adjustments as needed. <laughs> but um, I, now I'm kind of coming to a curve that's going up this way, but my thread is on this side. I'm gonna go ahead and leave it on this side because if I switched right now, it would make kind of a funny stitch. And the other thing I also wanted to point out, sometimes, especially if I've licked my thread to, to put it through the needle, it gets a little fuzzy on the end, and that's when I start to get a little, a little knot when I'm stitching. So I just clip that out every once in a while. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and, since this is, isn't a tight curve, but I do wanna change it, because pretty soon it will be a tight curve. Now would be a perfect time, right when it's at this juncture where it's gonna cross over this line because that will help hide that change. So now this is a pretty tight little curve. So what I will do is I will shorten my stitches. So I can bring them all the way down to maybe a 16th of an inch to try to keep them going in this, um, you know, laying flat rather than falling in. So when I'm going around curves like that, that little, I'm gonna take tiny, tiny little baby stitches. And now that I'm around the curve, my stitches can be a little bigger and this right there is where I switched from carrying the thread below to over and now I'm going to stitch right over that so that will hide any change that goes on there. So the other thing is I probably should have planned this a little bit better where I had enough thread, made myself a little knot, um, to finish this L and I'm not going to. So, but this will be a good opportunity to show you how I would um, change up my thread. So here's another good spot to do it is right at this intersection. So I'm just gonna take my needle down just like I would take a regular stitch, only I'm just gonna bring it to the back. And here I really don't want a big knot because I'm gonna be starting another stitch right there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and thread these under the previous. So now I'm at a good spot because this this little transition will be hidden underneath the stitch when I come around this way. But if it wasn't, and even though it is, I'm still going to take my needle up where it would have come up before. So not at the end, but where I would have brought the needle up. And now I'm gonna carry my thread on the outside because I'm going around a pretty tight little curve again. And I know some of you have asked why I don't use a hoop. It's just personal preference. Um, I tend to, when I'm stitching, um, manipulate the fabric with this other hand, which you can't really do in a hoop. So I kind of stitch with both hands, if that makes sense. When you finish stitching your piece, it's always good to press it. 
I like to do it from the back side and that way the depth of these stitches can kind of be absorbed into my pressing surface. So I'm not flattening the stitches so much. And this I do with a nice uh, hot iron with steam. And we have our finished piece. So this design I made for the One Stitch at a Time Monthly Embroidery Club. And for that club, I always offer two different ways to finish the pattern. So the first way was um, the way I just showed you with the uh, Valdani thread, 12 weight thread. And then the second way I finished it this time was with some colored pencils and with a DMC thread. I just used two strands and I took little, 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 tiny, tiny, tiny running stitches. So now that I have it colored in and stitched, I've decided I want this guy to be blue. I don't like him just being out there all by himself. So what I like to do is I like to iron a piece of freezer paper to the back. This is something from last month. It doesn't matter. It's just a leftover piece of freezer paper I had. So I, I'm going to iron it to the back of my surface. And what that does, it will stabilize the fabric. So it will make drawing or tracing on there much easier. Okay, so now that's really well adhered to the paper on the back. So it's not moving around anywhere. And I'm going to move this aside because I want to color this on a hard surface. I'm just, these are just Prismacolor color pencils, regular old color pencils, um, nothing special. So I'm going to just Kind of go around the outside, do tiny, tiny, tiny little spiral circles. The only thing about doing it afterwards, because I'd say, oh, just color the whole thing afterwards. That will work as long as you don't carry your threads underneath. Um, if you carry your threads, then it's going to change the color of the pencil right over that thread. So like you can see right where I put the eye on, I carried that thread. So it just makes it a little more difficult to color there. So when you're stitching towards or coloring towards a stitch, you wanna have your pencil point facing towards the stitch. So you're gonna actually have to turn your, your piece of fabric. And you're not pressing hard, you're pressing really light and then just go make layers. And that way too, you can shade it a little bit if you want. So maybe I'll make this underside a little bit darker. Maybe this wing a little bit lighter. Okay, now he looks like he belongs there. I like that, but see how fast and simple that was? So much easier, I'll show you. If I pull that off and then I try to color in something here, see how the fabric moves around? It's much easier with that freezer paper on the back. And I do have um, packs of freezer paper on my website if you don't have any. Um, you can also use the stuff that you pick up at the grocery store too. So if you ever want to color a piece in using colored pencils, this is how I would suggest to do it. When you print out your pattern, instead of putting it on regular paper, print it out on a piece of freezer paper on the paper side. This is the type of paper that has wax on one side and paper on the other. And I sell them in these sheets of eight and a half by 11. So they fit through your printer really well. Um, you don't want to use it on a laser printer because a laser printer works with heat. And since that's wax, it could gunk up your machine. So only on an inkjet printer. So what I do is, I get my piece of fabric, and even if I'm not coloring in, this is still how I trace my design. 
I turn it over so the back side's up, and then I'm going to center my design, and you need to use the one that's reversed if there's writing. If there's not writing, you know, it can really go either way, but I do include in the monthly stitchery program the reverse pattern also. Otherwise, I think there's apps on your computer that can turn it over for you or flip it. So um, we want to use a dry iron, and we're going to just press that in place and we're going to let that wax melt onto the fabric. It doesn't really leave any residual wax on the fabric, but what it does do is it just adheres it together really well. And the nice thing too is this freezer paper can be reused multiple times. So you can stitch this up over and over again. <laughs> okay, so let's make sure I got it on there really, really well. Okay, so I think that's on there pretty well. So now all I need is a light box or a window. I have a nifty little light box I like to use. And you turn that on and now I can see my design through my fabric and the freezer paper stabilized the fabric. So now all I have to do is color it in. So I can just Start coloring and I start pretty light. I tend to go around the edges. So I'm going to do the inside of the heart here. And I don't want to do that little leaf. So I'm going to go around the leaf. I find it works best not to have a super sharp pencil because then instead of getting a flat part of the pencil and getting a nice smooth coloring, you'll get a sharp line, which you don't want. So once you get this colored in, you can always go back over certain areas to make it a little darker. So if you want, say, the, the edge to be a little darker and then go lighter as it moves out towards the center, you can do that. But I would always start with lighter layers and then just work your layers up. But you can see how fast it goes. It goes pretty darn fast. And then um, if you need to, you can turn the light box off to see how well you've gotten to the edges. Or if you see if you miss any spots, you can just kind of go over them. I kind of like doing little tiny circles so it doesn't look too sketchy. But if you like sketchy, do it sketchy. Okay, so I have tried this before where I've colored it all in and then I've traced it and stitched it. And by the time I'm done stitching it, just from my hands, this is half the amount of color. It comes right off. So what I would recommend doing is using a textile medium like this. This is Jacquard Textile. It's colorless. It's an extender. And if you just paint this on, just a light coat, and I use a brush that's kind of flat and soft, but has some grit to it. And then I just paint on a very, very light coat because you are going to be stitching through this. So I wouldn't do it yet. I would wait until I have it all colored in and then do it. But um, sometimes it can push the color around. So don't go this way. You just want to paint it on only where you have your... Um, the color. And that's about as thick as I do it. It also intensifies the color, which is kind of nice in some ways. So not too much, just a little bit. You're going to let that dry on the freezer paper. Don't take it off the freezer paper yet. So once it's all colored, then what I do is I use a pilot friction pen and these disappear with the heat of an iron. And then I would use my light box to go ahead and trace my design. Let's start here with the L. And the freezer paper will hold the fabric nice and taut, and it makes tracing a whole lot easier. So if you're going to print your pattern out anyway, why not print it on freezer paper, is my thinking. And then if you do applique or anything, you can always use that freezer paper later for that. Cut it up, reuse it again. 
And you can use other types of pens, whatever you feel comfortable with. I just happen to like this because uh, as I'm designing and stitching, I might change my mind and I it will just erase, which is nice. And it's also nice if you're going to finish it like this one, because if it didn't erase, if it didn't, the lines didn't disappear after you ironed it, then you would see the rest of the line that was drawn. So it works really well with something like this where you're going to do just a little running stitch. And then once you've got it traced, once it's all colored and you've applied the textile medium and it's all fixed, then you can take it off of the freezer paper and just start stitching away. So I hope you're enjoying these. I have a fun time trying different things and I just want to thank you so much, um, all the members of the Monthly Embroidery Club. I appreciate so much that I get to do this for you and with you and I love seeing the different things you've stitched up and how you finish them with your own creativity and adding your own different stitches or colors or thread colors. It just... It, it makes my day when I see them. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much for that. And happy stitching.